Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to discuss how to use the flex and follow tempo option inside a Logic Pro for iPad. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, you might have wondered how you can get, for example, your audio samples or loops to follow tempo changes or a different tempo and therefore what happens to the playback speed and also the pitch well that is what what we are that is what we are going to cover today using a logic pro uh, for ipad on an ipad pro m1 so let's click on create project and then tracks okay and then we select patches and loops um samples because we want to load some of the samples okay the first thing i'm going to do is to go to loops Okay, and then I'm going to choose a loop. It doesn't matter which one. That will be fine. Click, hold, drag, and drop directly on a track. Okay, and there it is. And let's enable also the looping in there. Notice that um, um, this uh, loop, which is uh, an Apple loop, is four bars and 120 bits per minute. Okay, and you have this as well on the project tempo now okay let's close the browser so now let's decrease the tempo purposely click and hold on the tempo of the project and let's go well let's don't go too crazy something like um, 80 bits um, per minute instead of 188 128 uh, sorry let's click play <laughs> So you might be thinking, okay, this is following the uh, project tempo nicely and you have a slowdown, the pitch is maintained. Now click on the inspector, okay, and go first of all up to truck level, okay. You will find that flex is disabled at the moment, but then if you go to um, change to region level, you will find under general that... Um, it has this option which is called follow tempo okay which is activated okay so therefore you change the tempo on the project um settings and it follows the tempo that is quite normal for uh, apple loops and um, flex uh, and the follow tempo but in particular flex is uh, connected also to smart tempo so it's using actually uh, internal markers to actually um to synchronize effectively changes in tempo and you can do that at the bar level a bit levels both of them and of course if you um, change uh, or activate if you go up a track level flex you can then see what is the proposed flex mode or or algorithm which in this case is polyphonic okay which is actually the most intensive one and there are others, of course, which we will have a look at in a moment. But before we continue, let's uh, mute that track and um, let's try to uh, bring up um, um, a fly over here, the file up. Let's go inside audio files and then let's bring uh, a different track. Doesn't really matter which one here on. Uh, there you go. Let's close this window now. Okay, now we have a loop, right? And let's play now that loop. Now let me show you what happens when I decrease the speed now. It changes the uh, duration of that loop, right? Let's speed it up instead. And let's go, you see it's getting longer, right? Now, if I don't like that behavior, uh, you will notice that, uh, let's go back to 80, like so. You will notice now, if I select that, that it has flex and follow tempo to off. Now, you can activate that, and as I said, you have um, a number of options. You can have it just on, and you can have it aligned to bars and bits, and it's connected to smart tempo as I'm using markers, as I mentioned a moment ago. Now, let's see what happens when I, I now reduce the tempo. You see the size is the same, but of course it will reduce, it will follow the tempo. So 
So that is already a difference compared to the internal Apple loops to um, what you would, for example, import uh, yourself from other loops that you might have. So uh, let's get rid of the track. Let's go back to um, these. Uh, um, here we go. Um, let's go back right at the beginning and reselect that uh, uh, loop. Exactly the same. Okay. Let's click import. Yes, it has uh, um, file information and that is fine. Okay, so play again. And now slow it down to 80 or that about. Play again. Okay, let's open the inspector again. So as I mentioned at region level, this is uh, an Apple loop. You see follow tempo is already on. Okay, and that's the difference. Let's go up. Let's go up at track level. Now let's enable flex. Okay, and now you have the possibility to choose your flex algorithm. Okay, and also additional setting based on the one uh, that you choose. So let's start with the very top, which is monophonic. This is not ideal for this type of audio files because it's quite complex. You have different instruments, and the monophonic one is really good if you have just a a vocal or an instrument, the track is very dry, there's no lot of overlapping instrument or audio, and it's quite well defined, right? And the reason is that it um, uses or protects that percussive audio element, which you can also emphasize uh, using here the percussive element, which of course in some track when it's actually off, it would be beneficial in terms of not protecting that percussive um, area. Of course, all these algorithms analyze the transients inside the audio, that is what they do, okay? And that is why they actually absorb more uh, uh, CPU um, load. Okay, so let's click play. You can already hear those ticks, okay, and you can hear that is not the right algorithms and it will not get any better if you apply actually a percussive mode. <laughs> So, no, so we know that this is not ideal, but I wanted to show it to you so that you know how that works. So use that for vocal or for solo, okay? The next one is uh, slicing. This one actually slices audios in, uh, in which which is quite nice. You can see also that that, that is um, already happened on the visual. And uh, of course, you can tell it to fill the gaps. And how does it fill the gaps? It uses decay. Okay, and then of course you can change the slice length as well to obtain different effects. So let's try. You can see the effect of changing the slice length down to a very small amount. You, you hear all those staggerings, of course. You have 0 0.5 second up to for the K, but it's not helping because of the subdivision of the slices. If you increase the decay, it gets a little bit better, of course, because it's using more decays from the different slices to compensate and fill in the gaps. But again, this is not ideal for this type of audio files. Again, this one probably with the previous one as well, good for percussive audio, but not really for this one. Rhythm. This one is good, actually, um, for uh, guitar strum strumming and things like that, which... Um, which is really good, and to some extent keyboard as well. It uses audio looping, okay, to fill the gaps. And but you still have the option to change the length of those audio loops, and um, which of course uh, are defined within the audio that you have imported the decay. And also you can do an offset for the loops as well, which is which is really clever. <laughs> You can 
and here when the loop length is quite high and the decay is quite high it started it starts to muddle things which is not ideal again you can create loop offset but again it doesn't work very well for this type of audio sample or loop <laughs> Again, you can hear that is not appropriate. But again, it will work with different type of samples. So it's just good to know how it works. Then you have polyphonic. So polyphonic, which was the default one, uh, which was selected with that Apple um, loop, is actually the most complex uh, of the um, flex algorithm. It uses what is called phase vocoding and based on the phases um, information in adjust for the plane. And you can also increase the complexity of the algorithm. The drawback of this one works very, very well on audio sample like the one which we have selected, but it is very incentive in it is very is very intensive in terms of actually using your CPU. So if you have a lot of loops in your tra in your tracks uh, like these, maybe that's not what you want, particularly if you have an old device. <music> but you can hear it works really well. Next, we have um, speed effect. And I should have said that the previous one does time stretching, right? Um, but um, and so the uh, speed effects does time time stretching. It does it will accelerate and slow down parts, and therefore it will affect the pitch. Again, this might be something you want as an effect, or something that you don't want. <laughs> you hear straight away the pitch has changed, right? Then finally we have tempo form. And uh, as the name says, it's using an emulation of these uh, or something similar to what was produced by these um, um, tempo um, phone tape machine where you were actually having these lot of artifacts uh, as, um, as a compensation on the ways that they were wor working mechanically. And that is similar to almost have a granular uh, synth or granular effects, right? And indeed, it allows you to change the grain size and also the, cr the crossfading, which is really good. Again, I would use more of these as an effect. In, in fact, it just uh, tells you in the title of the algorithm that it is an effect. <laughs> And you can hear how the pitch is changing as you change the grain size. Uh, and uh, let me show you also on the cross fading. Again, you hear at low cross fading that you have more artifacts. Okay, so. This is an example using one audio loop. And of course, you can use your external uh, samples or loops. Uh, remember to activate at the region level uh, flex and follow the tempo. So it will follow the for uh, your tempo changes. And, you know, it's really great when uh, you use uh, um, Logic Pro for iPad. You can do uh, tempo changes over your track as well. Okay. And... You can use those uh, these uh, flex algorithms to uh, decide how Logic Pro will treat uh, all your audio samples and what it will do in terms of tempo and pitch and time stretch. But you can also use the algorithms to create um, some effects that in this case you are after um, directly on your samples in just, instead of just uh, uh, using them to adjust the, tempo, the uh, playback to them. Um, in response to the tempo changes so up to you i hope you enjoyed uh, the tutorial and as always see you next time bye